Shalom, joy to you. Thank you for coming and being at the table of the Lord with me again. Listen, I was, I, I, I meditate upon the table of the Lord a lot, and I have for well over four decades of ministry, and it, it, it means so much to me. And one of the things that I see is that there's never, eternally speaking, there's never a Passover meal that's forgotten. It has an eternal mark. It makes a, a mark in the spirits of men and women and children. It, it somehow is remembered um, in a, an eternal, in, in the eternals and in an eternal kind of a way. And so I, I, I don't mind dating the videos of, uh, the, of, of these tables of the Lord because we're, we're, this is April 2020 and something has taken place in, in the world that has never happened before. And somewhere down the line, you'll come back to this video and you'll hear, hear this date, but the table of the Lord is the same. And the principles I'm going to give you today are the same. And they're applicable perhaps in another way, but right now they're very applicable to us where we are, where we find ourselves in the world today. I want to talk to you about captivated. Captivated. I, when I say that, let me let me express it as the poets as the songwriters do i'm captivated in in love with the holy one i don't want to know about god i want to be captivated by love for him and there's a there is a big difference there i i want to be constantly aware of his love for me and I want to journey in, in connection, in oneness uh, to love those whom he loves. And each step is really, really cool. When I say that, I mean to unite with the Holy Spirit, love whom he loves, love, love what he loves, you know, Instead of just loving what I love and, and expecting him to love what I love, I'm captivated in love with him. Therefore, that takes our love uh, to a different, a different level, a different place. It means that he means everything. And it means that uh, what I love is, doesn't matter to me as much as what he loves. And so that begins a tremendous journey captivated the word word is you know divine defined uh, more by its context its surrounding circumstances will tell you what captivated means it should uh, literally mean imprisonment and uh, poets and songwriters as I've mentioned have also defined it as a highly favored love attentiveness and assigned they've assigned this word to that focused attentiveness of the love of the heart uh, the the focus of of your uh, uh, adoration and so and, and when it's 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 just an overwhelming focus that is to be captivated yet there are those who b believe they are captivated by circumstances. Right now, people think they're imprisoned in their own homes and imprisoned from social connection, meaning they're in their homes without social connection. This reminds me, however, of, uh, of, of Passover because the children... Of, of God were placed in their homes, were told to go into their homes and stay there, just like we are. And I think that's the first time ever. And so, uh, which makes these days astounding to me. But, but, but let's look at it this way. I, when I think of, about being captivated in, in our homes, I look at 
if if I were to look at it as imprisonment, I'd see it as as Peter and John when when they were imprisoned by by the religious authorities. Peter was imprisoned. He, the angel came at night and struck him and said, "Get up and put your shoes on. We're getting out of here." He was in in the prison, laying between two guards. His chains fell off of him, and the angel kicks him. You know, well, it doesn't. It doesn't say kick him. It says it struck. He struck him and awakened him and said, "Put your put your shoes and clothes on. Let's get out of here." But you know, both cases where Peter and John were in prison, and an angel appeared. In, in the prison and set them free. They went to the house of the Lord first and began to proclaim the kingdom of heaven just, just as the angel had told them. When Peter was in that prison, laying between two guards, and the angel came in and awakened him, they went through, the gates opened by themselves, and he went to the house of Mary. In both cases, they went into homes. Now, I think that's very significant. Home is a protection place. It's not a prison. And if you're feeling uh, it is as an imprisonment, I suggest to you that there's someone big on the inside that wants to socialize with you. Our social uh, endeavors need to change. They really do. And you know, if there's immaturity in our position, our place, in the things of God, it's probably in the in this one place. In fact, I'm I am I'm, I want to say it is in this one place. We find our immaturity in the in the place where we're never satisfied with only God, when Jesus is not enough for us, and we come to a place where we just need people and we need to have a hug, <laughs> etc. Those things that are taken from us. And we find ourselves in the very place where the cap, uh, ca- to be captivated by love for him right now is a wonderful time. To be captive, uh, maybe. In prison, not at all. In his grasp, absolutely. Listen, his, it, it's, it's written that in the fruit of the Spirit, there, there is... One of the ap- attributes of the magnificent uh, fruit of love in the Greek text is the Greek word, let me read it here, enkresia, uh, and, and it's a compound word. It means to contain within a hold or grasp in dominion. The fruit of the Holy Spirit has an ability to grasp us in his mighty hand and hold us, and keep us in his love. All right, we, we, I, I, I just kind of think this, this, this is captivating, the, the grasp of the Lord. Now, the Lord Jesus said, in my Father's house are many abiding places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and I prepare a place for you, And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that this is a monumental time, and we can either be fearful of the world because the world has done this to us, or we can be captivated in love with the the person of the Holy Spirit and learn a whole new way and mature in our relationship with God. I think if we come out of this matured in our relationship with God, there will be a magnificent harvest upon the earth like never before. Why I say that is because the globe is in the, all, all around the globe, we are all people in the same position and fear abounds and the spirit of fear is being cast out by media continually. And we, however, you and I, sit at a table in our house, captivated in love with him. And we're not captivated by the world, imprisoned. We are free. And so uh, we, we need to find our Father's house right here. And, and this table, 
you, you know the 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 bread the plate of the bread and the and the cup of the lord this is at, at our father's table now and and we need to see it that way this isn't a religious function now this is crossing over entering in coming through into the new and living way that is given to us, paved by the blood of Jesus Christ, the highway of holiness to our Father's house. Oh, this is, if there's anything captivating, it's that, that, that vision, that ability to see. To see our Father's house, the doors wide open, the angels of hospitality standing there, and so the spirit of invitation to you is so magnificent. And you can see the glow into the center of his house. And the center of his house is this great table of his deliverance. Oh, la- ladies and gentlemen, this what a time we're in. What a magnificent time. So we need to find our way to our Father's house and remain there because we're captivated by love for him. He is captivated by his love for us. How how much does he have to do to prove that to us? Can we mature past the place of of wondering whether he loves us because of our circumstances? Can't we mature past that? Can we get to the place where we know because he's shown us over and over, we know that he loves us. We know that he is captivated and his eyes are right now upon us. As we sit at this table, he is here right now. I can feel him. I get excited because I feel him. <laughs> I too, I I feel him, and he and I'm and thus I'm captivated in love, just like the poets, just like the songwriters have written, captivated by love for him. Passover tells us of what Yeshua would build to prepare for us. Yeah, go into your home. Your, that, that home became a light, a type and a shadow. You see, the blood was on the doorpost and the lintel of the home, the portal, and nothing could enter in. But that blood was a testimony. The testimony was that there's a lamb on the inside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a vision of heaven, and the Lamb is on the inside. He is enthroned there. Can you see that Passover is like looking through into our Father's house, into the place of heaven? We're seated there at the table. At the table is the Father. At the table is the Lamb, the, the, this in, in John's revelation, he, he's known as the love apostle because he laid his head upon Jesus' breast at the table of the Lord. He's the one that love was then uh, initiated in him, if not before, certainly at that time, reinitiated in him. And it began to grow mightily. He was a young man when he sat at the table with the Lord that night. He was an old man when he wrote such things as God is love and when he saw the, the revelation of Jesus Christ. It was him who, wrote, who penned uh, it, about the journey of the Lamb and his understanding in John chapter 14. When he quotes G- Yeshua as saying, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes unto the Father except uh, through me, he, he, and we've made that theolo- theology, and 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 we've lost the love of it. The love of it, when we are captivated, you see, he says, "I'm with you in this journey. We're gonna journey. We're on a journey right now, but our journey is not ending here. This is not the end of our journey. Oh, today, you you know, someone, a songwriter wrote, "Today's the, the first day of the rest of your life," and. And, and I'm sorry, I don't know who actually first penned that, uh, or I would say, but, but it, it, this y- yesterday was yesterday, today is today. Yesterday was great if you were captivated by his love. Today is great because you're captivated by his love, but it means that there is a journey. I am the journey. I am the truth. And truth is a person, not a belief system, not a philosophy. 
and life. This is Zoe, God, God life. It's over and abundant. It's so much more than your, your living space and, and where you naturally abide. You say, well, but I do have to naturally abide, not if you make it something else. You, you, are, you are a spirit. You are spirit. You are life. You have, have you not been saved? by the Spirit of God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, then you're not who the world thinks you are. Jesus said one time, I think it was John chapter 8, he says, uh, he, he was talking to the Pharisees, and I like to put it in street language, and I say, hey boys, you know what the problem here is? The problem is, I'm from above and you're not. Yeah, if you look it in there, it, it, it doesn't say it that way, but that's, that's Wayne's street language. And, and, and he was, I am from above. And, and you have been reborn from above. You're not from here. You're, you're alien to this place. You, gotta, you, you, you have the power to make your home the Father's house and your table the Father's table. And you have the authority on earth to journey with the Lamb. Wow, that's cool. That is so cool that... English words can't shandara bakasa braba de bele bakara barata da dasa blemana nanstanda vrapa. The way to him, let, 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 me, let me say we have listened too much to theologians, okay? The way to him should not be to try to know about him. Did you hear what I just said? That, that, some people will call that heresy. But I tell you, from someone who is captiva- captivated in love for him, I know that the way, the way to him is, is, can, it can't be to know about him. The way to him is to know him and be ca- captivated by our heart's love for him. You see, he's too big to know about he, we can't even, theologians have worked for millennia to try to explain who, what, what he's about, and they still can't do it. They fail miserably at it. And yet, those who really know him are captivated by love for him. They have him. They have the wisdom of the ages. They have eternal life. They have everything, and we have everything. Dear listener, please understand that this table is eternal right now. And so it doesn't matter when we partake of this particular table or the next one or the next one. It's eternal, and you're in the eternals. And so he took the bread after supper, and he he said, this bread is my body, which is handed out in hospitality for you. So, so hospitable is the Spirit of God to give us his body. And so we partake of his, his, this bread as a type and a shadow of his body. So let's partake of it together as one body partaking of the bread. Maybe hit the pause button and, and just partake of the bread and consider this is my father's house i'm eating oh my god i'm eating in my father's house yeah yes yes and amen and he took the cup after supper saying this cup is a new covenant of my blood which is for you do this in remembrance of me it's a new covenant blood Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the inheritance, Father. Thank you for coming, sharing this table with me. Be captivated. Be captivated. Let your heart be captivated in love with him. Amen. 